morning, everyone. Another Sunday, and we are together in our respective locations. We here now enter the third Sunday of Advent. Two more weeks, and it'll be Christmas. Some announcements between now and then, and that is if you would like to attend our Christmas Eve service, which is at 9 o'clock in the evening at that day, Christmas Eve, uh, please register with the office to uh, so that we can accommodate the people that will be there. Uh, COVID is requiring that we, that we ask that you do this. Would you please call the church office at 902-243-2621 and leave your name, phone number, and the number of people in your group. If you have to leave a message, if we answer the phone, what's what we're looking for? Your name, your phone number, and the number of people that will be in your group. First come, first serve, and hopefully we can accommodate all who would like to be part of our Christmas Eve service. Let us begin our service of worship. Come, let us prepare ourselves for Advent, our faith and hope and love renewed. We call for God to come and lead the peoples of, to your peace. We gather for a time of waiting and preparing for the light to be born within us again. We call for God to come and shine upon our shadowed world. We come into this time of, to pause and to pray and to share in our worship. We call for God to come and make a home within our hearts. Let us pray. O Lord, we are so close so close to being part of this miracle, this great gift, we can almost feel it and wonder and the joy. While the children become more excited, we as adults try to become calmer. How can we possibly do that? Do we not feel the warmth and the wonder of this great gift of love that is being given to all of God's family here on earth? Shall we not rejoice as we hear the angels and see the shepherds all moving toward Bethlehem on that special night? O oh Lord, we are so close to being part of this miracle, this great gift. May we allow our excitement to overflow in wonder and in joy. Amen. And our prayer of renewal. Your spirit, O oh God, is upon us. You have anointed us to bring good tidings to those afflicted, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to those who are captive, to proclaim the year of your favor and to comfort those who mourn and give them the oil of gladness. You, O oh God, love justice. You hate robbery and wrong. You made an everlasting covenant with us, and today we confess our failings. We have not been faithful to the covenant, we have not loved you and others with all our hearts. We have not loved justice as you do, nor proclaimed your liberty and your comfort with all our heart and soul and mind and strength. Forgive us, O God. Send your blessing once again that we may reveal and reflect the light of the world in our thoughts, in our words, and in our deeds. Trusting in the wisdom and teachings of Jesus, we pray. Amen. God is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, seeding each of us and all creation with the love of Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John, reading from the first chapter. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice crying in the wilderness. 
make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, Why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah nor Elijah nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not one worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany, across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Have you noticed that the Gospels seem to be stuck? Last Sunday we heard the same story the announcing by John the Baptist of the coming of someone greater, the one that John says he is not worthy so much as to untie the thong of his sandal. Although slightly different in the message contained in the reading since Advent Sunday, I have centered on John the Baptist, warning the people of his time of the pending arrival of the one they all have been expecting. We have been asked to be prepared for this event. We have been asked to be ready at all times for this arrival. We are reminded that only God the Father knows when this time will be. Then we heard that as part of the preparation for this event, we were to repent our sins. We were told that we were to be baptized. Now, today, we hear once again the message of preparedness. Once again, we hear the familiar statement, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. We know today who that person was that John told his people about. That person who was the one foretold by the prophets many centuries earlier. Believing Jews knew that one day the Messiah would come among them. The teachings of the prophets made it clear. Isaiah had spoken of a voice crying, Prepare the way of the Lord. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill made low. John the Baptist was the new voice and the new messenger. If we are to be participants with Jesus, we ought to heed John the Baptist's call to repentance and choose the new life Jesus came to bring. We face a moment of decision. We need to look to Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, and prepare to offer him the fruit of our repentance. Paul, in his letter to the Thessalonians, asks that we hold fast to what is good, to abstain from every form of evil. Now that we are in the season of Advent, let us take the time to make an examination of, of conscience. Advent calls us to prepare for the coming of the Savior. Just as John the Baptist called for the people of his time to prepare for the long-awaited Messiah, Advent in our time bids us to do the same. Sometimes we are reminded that Advent is announcing the pending arrival of a baby. We have, as believers, already experienced this arrival, and we live, relive it, the great story, every year. But for some of us, our preparedness for the coming of Jesus may be in its infancy. Maybe for some of us, what is to happen on Christmas Day will be the arrival of a baby. We may only be at the beginning of our growth in our relationship with God. As the months unfold before us, we will be given the opportunities to learn, to mature in our understanding of this stuff we call God. Advent begins anew the cycle of the life of Jesus. Through the next 12 months, we will walk together, hearing afresh the call to be disciples for Christ. Over that time, we will face several moments of decision, but we have to expect that. Lowering mountains, filling in valleys, and making rough ways smooth is not an easy task. 
But like all babies, we have to crawl before we can walk. Crawling is a major achievement for babies. Moving from the position of being on their backs to the position of self-mobilization to self-motivation is a major achievement. Moving from the position of sitting in a pew, hearing the call of God each Sunday, to the position of doing what we are called to do can be a major achievement. It should cause a major change in our circumstance. And according to John the Baptist, we have to start by facing those things we are doing that are wrong. Look at the wrong stuff directly and decide to change. When we make that decision, we begin to grow, but we must face a moment of decision. For others of us, our preparedness for the coming of Jesus has moved beyond crawling. Now we are walking. The whole world is in front of us. Now that we are more mobile, we are called to whole new experiences. We can reach and take a hold of so many more things. We can threaten to play with the knickknacks of life. We can break those precious things and run from them. We still are not quite mature enough to realize those things God expects of us. We still need the influence that a good parent, that only a God can give. Maybe we are in the teen years in our relationship with God. If that is the case, then we may rebel against those things that God expects of us. In our effort to establish our independence, we can easily pass by the good things. Like when we started to walk, we can experience many more things, and many of those things may not include God. Then we need the influence of John the Baptist, one who can cause us to see our ways and who can bring us back to the good life. Others of us are more mature in our preparation or perception of God. We are taking our experiences of life and working them into a faith that gives us the, the comfort and peace that is part of what believing in God is all about. We are called to use the, those experiences to share with others in their individual journeys of faith, to move them along their, in their growth, in their relationship with God. We are called to be examples. Here we can be the prophets of old, the John the Baptists and the disciples of Christ. But the challenge is great, and we can at times feel like we are the voices that are crying in the wilderness. There are those who hear the voice, but there are also others who, it seems, are not listening or who are not trying to stop the voice or who are trying to stop the voices. We hear the voices calling for help, coming from many diverse directions. There are the voices from around the world, voices that are asking for help against the COVID virus. In some countries, the voices of God are being deafened by politics and by interests other than the welfare of the people. But there are many other voices that are crying out that need to be heard too. The fighting in the Middle East between various factions comes to mind. Then there are the political desires of some world leaders to cleanse their societies of other ethnic groups. There are the voices of those crying out for, home, for the homeless, the poor, and those voices are not all that far away. We face a moment of decision. Our very faith is being called into question. Our very faith is being challenged. There are elements of our society that are slowly tearing away at the very fabric of which Christianity is made. I think of the tree fiasco of a couple of years ago where the city of Boston called Nova Scotia's annual gift of an evergreen tree a holiday tree, not a Christmas tree. It is heartening to see the uproar that caused and the return to the gift as being a Christmas tree. In recent times, schools held holiday concerts or winter concerts, not Christmas concerts. 
The first year I was here, I was asked to participate at a remembrance service at the local high school, but I was cautioned not to be too Christian in my prayer. This may seem somewhat trivial, but to reach the core, one has to start at the outside. There are other things happening that are far more worrisome. During the preparations for the memorial service for the victims of Swiss Air off Peggy's Cove, Christian workers were asked to keep references to Jesus to a minimum. Excuse me, but what are we doing here? What are we letting happen right in our very front doorstep? We face a moment of decision. Are we ready for the arrival of the landlord? Hold fast, according to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 to 28. Hold fast to what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify us entirely, and may our spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us be attentive to our offering, and I wish to extend to everyone a sincere thank you for the support you have given your, our church since the closure in April and the COVID restrictions that have come in place since then. Your participation and your support are very much appreciated, and we've been able to continue to function and meet our obligations just as the same as if we had been open most of the time. As the wise men offered gifts most rare at the manger crude and bare, so may we with holy joy, pure and free from sin's alloy, all our costliest treasures bring, Christ to you, our heavenly King. Let us pray. We place our hope in these gifts, gracefully given, living God, and you place your hope in us as the gifts are used our hope of skill and talent well used, our hope of loneliness compassionately overcome, our hope of worship faithfully offered, 
our hope of neighborhood needs joyfully met, our hope of mission and projects that bring new life. We realize that with our gifts comes our commitment to serve in the way of Jesus. So we ask you, loving God, to offer your loving blessing to our service. Amen. As a community of passion and compassion created in God's image, let us go out into the world to both spread and point out the goodness of God's work, grace and respect that is present in the world around us this week and into the weeks to come. Do so knowing that God achieves God's will through our efforts, the people of God. Amen. We celebrate with those who are having birthdays, anniversaries. We also celebrate anyone who's made a special achievement in the past week. Gracious God, be with us as we celebrate our special achievements. Holy Spirit, be present as we enjoy a long life, as we renew vows made, and as we grow and experience your grace. Amen. We pray for all who are unwell at home, in hospital or nursing homes, remembering Mary Patterson and Rosetta Fay Moore. We ask that you comfort them in this time of their discomfort. We pray for those who are now at rest with God, remembering Hugh Allen Jukes of Spring Hill. Rest eternal and light perpetual shine upon him, gracious God. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us go forth, for the love of God is ours to share, the peace of Christ is ours to extend, and the power of the Holy Spirit is ours to offer. Let us go in peace. Let us not be afraid. Let God go with us each hour of every day. Let us go now in faith, steadfast, strong, and true. Let us know that God will guide us in all we do. Let us go now in love and show that we believe. Let us reach out to others so that all the world can see that God will be there watching from within. Let us go in peace, in faith, and in love. Amen. And I wish to close by reminding you that our Christmas Eve service will be on the 24th, of course, at 9 in the evening, service with communion. And we ask that if you are to, going to attend, we, that you register. Between the 13th to the 23rd of December, we will accept registration for our Christmas Eve service by phoning 902-243-2621. If it's necessary that you, must leave, that you have to leave a message, we ask you to include your name, telephone number, and the number of people that will be coming with you. We look forward to seeing you on Christmas Eve. Hugs and we'll talk again soon.